Hey guys, this is Hot Noob here, and um, uh, just wanted to officially say that the Galaxy Online 2 pack that I have just released like yesterday has already been fixed by IGG. They apparently had an emergency um, announcement, or I mean emergency server maintenance, and I'm not sure if this is true. Let me go back here. Um, could have been written by IGG here, but someone posted this up, and if it was written by IGG, um, they probably deleted the thread because that's how they are, right? They don't want to admit to their wrongs. So I'm not too sure if they've learned their lesson, but it seems like they have. Other than that, there's, um, <clears throat> their support is really bad with um, players, right? Their customer support. So uh, they still use the old um, databasing system that they used for Galaxy Online 1. And it is a complete piece of crap. So there's going to be a high amounts of data loss and people are going to eventually start noticing that um, their items are going to be just magically disappearing. And as you can see there's been a rather there's been an increase in them. And uh, it seems that every time they do a server maintenance at least uh, 10 or 20 people lose a ton of their items, right? <clears throat> so yeah, like I know someone who's lost um, about like 800 or so MPs worth of commander cards or whatever. Or um, they put 800 MPs into um, buying, getting commander cards and then when the server maintenance came out he lost them all and then he's been fighting with IGG to get them back for like a month now <clears throat> and then there are people requesting on the forums for refunds and stuff like that and I doubt any of them <coughs> have gotten their full refunds anyway um, today I'm just going to be showing everyone how to install an Apache server and I believe I've decided not to continue to hacking with IGG because it seems like they've learned their lesson in just by looking at how fast they're fixing the bugs but they really need to work on their customer support and I might come back to them if they continue to have bad customer support and I might just I don't know, shut down their customer support or something stupid like that anyway uh, to install Apache I'm just gonna open up a new tab here I'm gonna go google.ca or google.com whatever you want just search for Apache server and um, you want the second one that says HTTPD right stands for HTTP download or whatever I don't know what it stands for that's just my guess then you just go download from a mirror and go stable release choose a version I'm just gonna go with the higher number and um, you can get the source or you can get the installer you can get one to include OpenSSL and one to not. Um, chances are that you won't need OpenSSL. Depends on what you're using the server for. <clears throat> so I'm just going to download this, and it comes in an MSI or sorry MSI installer. <clears throat> I don't know how big the download is, so yeah, it's going to wait a while. And it's been like, I don't know, a year or so since I've installed the Apache server. Oh, there we are. It's not that big. Now, this is pretty much the easy part. If you're looking to do um, software development or website development using the, the Apache software, um, it's going to be a lot <coughs> of work. So all users port 80. And uh, don't worry too much about the installation thing. Um, you can change most of the configuration in the middle of it. Um, as you as you'll notice, a lot of it is done just through a text file that you have to edit and so on. So what you're gonna want to do is you're just gonna while it installs or something, just look at the documentation and this is version 2.2, so version 2.2 and yet yeah, 
There's how to tutorial, tutorials, references, user guides. Unfortunately, you have to know like exactly what you're looking for. Um, it's pretty shitty actually. Like um, if you compare it to something like PHP, this is like ugh, a nightmare. <clears throat> anyway, um, for this, uh, while you're running the server or whatever, you're going to have to close Skype. That's probably what's even blocking the setup. Um, oh no, there we are. The, just the UAC. Anyway, um, Skype is actually locked onto, or at least the last time I checked. Anyway, um, we'll see. But Skype is. Um, what do you call it? Uh, port listening or is listening on um, <coughs> one of the ports that the server uses. And um, yeah, Skype doesn't actually have to listen on that port, so I don't know why they have it on there as default. But yeah, once you close Skype and start up your server and then start up Skype again, it will work. Anyway, um, my computer is starting to lag. I'm just going to pause this while the installation finishes. Oh, never mind. It's going. It's doing this little thing. Testing, yeti, yeti, yeti. That's probably Skype there. Screen it up. So it says it couldn't bind it. So whatever, right? Uh, yeti, yeti, finish. So, let's say you accidentally had Skype on. All I have to do is close it. Okay, let's open up Task Manager. Go to Skype. Right, and close it. And sorry, I'm a bit sluggish. This is my new uh, computer. Um, I haven't gotten used to the keyboard yet, so you might see me opening up random programs. And stuff. Anyway, you got a little icon here. Just go open uh, Apache Monitor, or you can just type in here um, start. Oops, start. Right, and it should get you this nice um, icon there. I'm just going to use it for the map, the monitor. So you just click start. Oh, way to go! So yeah, I still have the UAC enabled on this computer, and I hope it will. Oh, there we are. So there it should be running. Then to test it, you just go local host. Oh, way to go, Google! I hate Google Chrome. Oh, it works! Ta-da! And then to um, get your files or whatever there, just go um, C, Program Files, Apache Server Foundation, and um, if you have 64-bit, make sure it's the 86, right? Because it's a 32-bit program. <coughs> Oops. Then you go to HT Docs, right? And this is where you put all of your files, and I'm just going to start transferring it while I talk about this crap. Does it have a lot of files to transfer? Um, oh, which uh, server do I want to kind of just transfer? All of these guys? Okay. So yeah, this is my old uh, hard drive. I just attached it to my PC so I could access and transfer the files. Oops, there we go. So anyway, um, a bit of basics for the noobs there out there. Um, first of all, it will always call your index page. Um, if you have index.php or whatever, you need to configure your server to do that. And so on. <clears throat> so for the go bots or whatever, you just put in the, or I mean not the bot, but the hacks for hacking it, you just put it in here and so on. And that's pretty much it. I guess this is um, a good example. It works yet yet. That's pretty much all there is to it. Um, yeah, you just download, install, poof. If you want it to be accessed via um, your URL or whatever, right? <clears throat> Sorry, um, via your IP address or something like that, then 
what you need to do is you need to look into port forwarding and to do that you need to um, <coughs> first of all look at your DHCP reservation table in your router and then you also have to um, port forward that specific port whatever port your servers on so it'd probably be port 80 to um, this computer or your computer and then you should be able to use your external IP address to get access to your site <clears throat> anyway um, this is hot noob and come check out my blog at hotnoob.com <laughs>